you live on the East Coast, it's probably one of the lesser known departments for you. But if you're from the West, the Department of the Interior is one of the most important in the whole government. And it makes Secretary Ryan Zinke an incredibly powerful force in the region. Alex Miller joins us now. Just so happens that is his home region to begin with, right? So uh, he's somewhat of a known quantity there. But to a lot of the U.S., Zinke's a new man. Uh, in your series that you've been doing, Alex, where you're looking at these agencies and the people who run them, Zinke kind of stands alone. He does. He's a little bit different because a lot of the people that we profiled have had issues with the departments they ran before they got there. Yeah. We're looking at Pruitt, Perry, Betsy DeVos. Price. Um, exactly. But now we uh, are looking at Secretary Ryan Zinke, who didn't necessarily have as much experience with the department, and he's shown that he can stand up to his own party on these environmental issues, but the real controversy that he's facing is happening now, and it's from people within his own department. These days, 55-year-old Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke's job focuses a lot on numbers. He's in charge of 500 million acres of land, 59 national parks, land that 567 native tribes live on, and millions of acres rich in oil, gas, coal, and timber. The Montana native served as a Navy SEAL before being elected to the state legislature and then the House of Representatives. The former U.S. congressman calls himself a conservative conservationist, drawing himself criticism from both sides of the aisle. He's been outspoken about his thoughts regarding climate change. Climate is changing, man is an influence. But has not managed to convince many in his own department he'll take action contrary to the Trump administration's agenda. In fact, Zinke shifted nearly a quarter of senior career employees to different departments unrelated to their specialties and proposed cutting the department by 4,000 employees. For example, Joe Clement, who ran the Office of Policy Analysis, was moved to the Office of Natural resources revenue, which collects royalty payments. He tendered a fiery resignation to Secretary Zinke last month. In the letter, Clement criticized Zinke on what he called his failure to lead on climate change and said Zinke could not be trusted with natural resources. The resignation came one week after the secretary claimed nearly a third of his staff was disloyal to President Trump. Still, Zinke bucked his party on one of the issues it fought the Obama administration most on the transfer of federal land to state hands. He even resigned as a delegate to the RNC because of its addition to the platform. Yet before he left Congress, he did support a package that would have made these transfers easier. Zinke is fielding these internal controversies while working with his department to prioritize the $12.5 billion in backlog of maintenance and repair to national parks. His plans on paying for that backlog are the subject of his most recent criticism. So this backlog is really controversial, not just because it's two and a half or twelve and a half billion dollars, but because the Trump administration proposed such big budget cuts mm. within the Department of Interior, and then they're now asking uh, to raise the the fees for parks. So. I spoke with Professor Melissa Michelson about why the blueprints for how they're going to pay these backlogs are so controversial. The Trump administration proposed cutting the budget by nearly $400 million while also increasing the cost of going to the national parks by nearly three times. Do you think the juxtaposition between the two is harmful for Zinke's stated goal of protecting these lands? Well, I think that's the crux right there. It's his stated goal, but I I think there's a lot of reason to doubt that that's what he's doing. Now, on the one hand, you could say raising the entrance fee is going to reduce use of the lands because it's going to price people out of going to these national parks and national monuments. And of course, the impact of people driving to those places is something that maybe could be managed. But the whole point of these places is that they're there for people to enjoy, not just to save them sealed off from, from human contact. Do you think that the $70 will price people out of going to these parks? Yeah, I think it absolutely will. I think $70 is a lot of money for people. I think when we're saying these are public lands, these are public parks, public monuments, it should be something that's more accessible to the regular public, not just to wealthy Americans. He recently announced the largest oil and gas sale in U.S. history. It's uh, 80 million acres in the Gulf of Mexico will be open for auction in March 2018. Does that contradict with, with the mission? I think it really does. I mean, I think the Department of the Interior, it's supposed to be about managing these lands so that they're there for future generations. And it wasn't too long ago that we had a massive oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. And so the idea that managing it 
is compatible with opening it up to more and more oil exploration. I don't know that that's really what people are expecting in the Department of the Interior. If you live in the Western U.S. or if you work in the Department of Interior, you have this vision of what this job is supposed to be. Do you think he's going to be able to get these people on his side throughout his tenure? I think Zinke is up against a wall of opposition because the truth is this is one of those very rare instances where you're uniting the left and the right. He is going to be angering environmentalists and he is angering outdoorsmen, hunters and anglers, right, which are usually Republicans. Both sides of the aisle now, as they learn more about what Zinke has planned for these national monuments, he's going to be facing opposition from both sides. The first thing I learned tonight, Alex, in your package is that um, watching that video, I would like to be the Secretary of the Interior. He has the coolest job. It is so beautiful, and like he just goes from national monument to national monument. To waterfall, to right? log boat, to... You see everything that's yeah. beautiful about this country, right? Uh, but he has a bit of a, a, a tough road ahead, and part of this is that he has recommended shrinking some national monuments, right? Um, so far, there is a repercussion which nobody expected. It's coming from Illinois senator. Yeah, exactly. Senator Dick Durbin. I mean, uh, there's only two other people confirmed besides Ryan Zinke uh, to the Department of Interior that need to be confirmed. There's four that are still waiting, and it's all over the shrinking of these national monuments. Now, don't think like the National Monument, like the pencil. We're talking these big parks that they want to uh, shrink. And it's highly controversial because of, you know, people are used to going to these lands. Protected lands. Uh, exactly. Um, and so the Senator Durbin wrote a letter to Brian Zinke, Secretary Zinke, that he wanted to meet with him. He hasn't heard back yet. And he's holding his these four confirmations until he does so. And what, it, what we uh, now know is that he's disclosing that this hold, which senators don't typically have to do, but Durbin has chosen to come forward and so say, I'm can, not confirming these people until you decide what you're doing about They can just put a hold and no one's going anywhere until that point. Exactly. Stuck Woo. with an empty Department of Interior. All right. Cool job.